to understand the concept of biochemistry of starvation how our body adapts to the starvation condition what are the biochemical processes that are used by our body to adjust and adapt to those conditions we can use the example of recession so when there is recession generally we tend to prioritize our expenses whatever funds that are present we use those funds only to the necessary things so we won't use that for luxury things in the same way when our body is in starvation condition our body prioritizes the available energy sources available molecules in our body so that they are used for only important things or they are diverted for the important tissues in this video we'll discuss how the carbohydrate metabolism is adjusted and after that how the protein and fatty acids metabolism are also adjusted or modified according to the requirements during the starvation understand the biochemical changes or biochemistry of starvation first we should know what is starvation so starvation it is a state of prolonged food deprivation so here it is involuntary the person is not able to take food it is involuntary he is not avoiding the food so whenever the person is voluntarily avoiding the food then it is fasting so in simple starvation is involuntary whereas fasting is voluntary so how carbohydrate metabolism is affected during starvation so glucose is the primary energy source of the body but during starvation when the carbohydrates are not available body depends on the other alternative fuel sources like proteins and fats so amino acids from the proteins and fatty acids from the fats they are oxidized to produce energy but there are some tissues like brain which prefer glucose as the primary source of energy but brain can also use ketone bodies when the availability of glucose is reduced important thing is red blood cells rbcs they use only glucose as the energy source they cannot utilize any other source they require only glucose so because of this body has to find ways to maintain the glucose level so it activates the processes like hepatic glycogenolysis to release glucose which is stored in the liver as glycogen but the problem is the amount of glycogen stored in the liver is about 75 to 150 grams which hardly supplies glucose for about 12 to 18 hours so as the level of glycogen depletes gluconeogenesis is activated the other mechanism which produces glucose using non carbohydrate precursors using non carbohydrate sources as the rate of glycogenolysis decreases the rate of gluconeogenesis gradually increases which provides glucose it supplies glucose to maintain the glucose levels and to provide this glucose to the glucose dependent tissues like rbcs so as we discussed gluconeogenesis is synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate sources one of the main precursors for gluconeogenesis are amino acids and among these amino acids alanine is the main amino acid which is released from the muscle and this is used in the gluconeogenesis this is the reason behind muscle wasting and negative nitrogen balance during starvation so on one side glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis these two are trying to maintain the glucose levels and in the meantime on the other side lipolysis is increased to provide fatty acids so why lipolysis is increased the reason is when you see in case of well fed state there is insulin and this insulin will inhibit lipolysis but the person who is in starvation the level of insulin is very low glucagon is more so ultimately lipolysis is now activated which releases these fatty acids so this is another energy source these fatty acids which are released they are oxidized and the end product of fatty acid oxidation is acetylcholine 
So whatever SLQ is produced during this oxidation, it is utilized in ketone body synthesis. So normally, whatever SLQ is produced that enters into the TCA cycle, oxidized to produce energy. But even though the amount of SLQ is produced is very high, this is not utilized by the TCA cycle or this is not oxidized by the TCA cycle to produce energy. The reason is during starvation, oxaloestate which is present as one of the intermediates of the TCA cycle, it is diverted to gluconeogenesis. That means the availability of oxaloestate is decreased and whenever there is decreased availability of oxaloestate, the estel coa cannot condense with this oxaloestate. So that is the reason there is lot of estel coa and there is a limited amount of oxaloestate. So because of this reason, whatever excess estel coa that is formed during this fatty acid oxidation, it is diverted to ketone body synthesis instead of entering into TCA cycle. In prolonged starvation, gluconeogenesis from the proteins is diminished. Reason is, it is due to reduced release of amino acids from the muscle. So meanwhile, as we discussed, brain primarily uses glucose, but it can use other sources when there is decreased availability of glucose. So during this prolonged starvation, brain adapts to ketone bodies replacing half of the glucose oxidase. That means, for example, during starvation, if it can use 100 glucose molecules, during prolonged starvation, out of 100, when there is only 50 available, it uses 50 glucose molecules and remaining 50 is replaced by ketone bodies. Finally, increased ketone bodies production leads to ketosis and again that leads to metabolic acidosis. And this is seen in case of severe prolonged starvation. Now, this acidosis is because of starvation. So, that's why we call it as starvation ketoacidosis. If it is because of diabetes, we call it as diabetic ketoacidosis. So, anyway, acidosis condition, if it is not treated, if it is not corrected, then it leads to death. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.